Well, just make sure you have 10. We'll figure it out. Okay. So, Adrian, what is your call? You need to come sit over here. You can't sit over here. Adrian, will you tell the class what your colonial job or trade is, sir, that you've been researching? My colonial job is having. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. One more time. You're the you're a tavern keeper. Tavern keeper. Okay, interesting. So you have your pay for being a tavern keeper. Savannah, what was the job you were researching? Uh, no. No. no what, the in job? Mr. Willis's class for the colonial jobs and trades, uh, what was your job? A what? A candler. Okay, awesome. All right. What was yours, Christian? Blacksmith. Awesome. Jackson? A cooper? My family's maiden name. We were coopers in my family. Go ahead, Geneva. I? Yes. Decided to be a blacksmith. Yes, she did decide to be a blacksmith. Ava? A candler. All right. Leah? A bookbinder. That's a very important. Andrew, a blacksmith. Cameron, a potter. Awesome. And Adelina. Um, I put that word called when I was like, to help You help people with medicine? Yeah. Okay. To make but had a lot of interest between the fur trade and so they want to fight over the fur trade who can own much more of the fur trade than the other and then you also have a uh, rivalry going on between who could own more land so had a lot of different types of rivalry happening in the early colonies right so what these countries wanted to do england and france and Spain is that they wanted to be the country that owned the most land in America. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, here we go. I brought two little books. Where did I put them? Right here. Okay, I just wanted to read just a little bit of background information, then we'll go on. So, these are two great books I have in the classroom. One is Can't You Make Them Behave, King George. That's a great one. And If You Lived at the Time of the American Revolution. So, what started the revolution? I'm just going to read these two pages just to give you some background information. Okay? The first settlers in the colonies liked having British help and protection. British soldiers were there to help them fight Native American enemies and to keep other countries such as France and Spain from invading. It was like your mother watching over you. However, as you grow older, you want more freedom and you want to make your own decisions. And that's how many of the colonists felt. Okay. The colonists grew tired of following British rule. England controlled trade and told people where they could settle. They forced the colonists to provide housing and food for British soldiers sent to protect them. 
And since 1760, the colonists had also paid taxes for various products. Under a law called the Stamp Act in 1765, the colonists had to pay extra money for newspapers, land deeds, card games, dice games, and even graduation diplomas. I um, was looking on the internet and doing some research, and those the die, the dice that you play, talk, that you play games with, there would, there would be a little stamp on it. It was it cost extra money just to own one of those dice. And that extra money went to the king. Okay? Why? Because he had the power to do that. He was trying to he was trying to raise money to pay for the French and Indian War, so he's taxing the colonists. The colonists had no direct way to complain since no one from the colonies is allowed to be a member of the British Parliament. The British Parliament is who made the rules. James Otis, a Boston lawyer, stirred up the colonists when he said they should not pay taxes until they send a person in, from the colonies to speak in Parliament. Taxation without representation is tyranny. We should not, what they're saying is we should not be taxed if we don't have somebody here representing us in what is in our best interest, okay? So here we go. Everybody has 10 coins. I am going to pick the first card. After all taxes, the funds are to be dispersed. The tax collectors, um, so once we collect all the taxes at the end, the tax collectors are gonna get 10% of the total money. Parliament receives 50% and then the final 40% is going to go to the king. So tax collectors, when you collect the money, just start putting in here, okay? Okay, so here we go. You can collect taxes on that side, you can collect taxes on this side. So hold on one second. All right, so here we go. All right, the first thing that we are taxing today, ladies and gentlemen in the colony, is if you have on a red shirt, you owe the king three coins. If you have on a red shirt, you owe the king three coins. So tax collectors, come collect your three coins. You have, you have to give the king three coins. What would happen if you didn't give the king your money? Um, you would be dead.
to do. All right, you're refusing to pay Andrew Burke? Five. Okay. You have to give your all of your money to the king and go to jail, sir.
How much money does he get? Jace to go around and collect 